This house tour is brought to you by Squarespace. This house is in a very beautiful neighborhood in Toronto in the West End. Lots of gorgeous trees around it. It's a compact house, very compact before I got here. <laughs> and so we had to expand the space to make it work for our family of three. They wanted to have a big ensuite washroom because the house only had one bathroom on the second floor and one in the basement. So they needed it to function again for everybody in the family. But I would say the number one thing is that the client is a big fan of Athena Calderon and I swoon. Her big request was, I want that kitchen. So we had to recreate that kitchen, which is from a Brooklyn brownstone in this Toronto 1930s house. So I worked with an architect who I love, Great Lakes Studio, and he and I worked together to map out the addition. So this part right here where I'm standing is all completely new. Um, the house before ended pretty much right here. So we added all of this. These are all Pella windows that we added. We wanted to let in tons of light. It was important to have the face frame detail on the cabinetry. This color, railings, which has a lovely deep blue undertone, but it still reads as black and white, totally classic, but with some modern accents. The countertop is also, I think, a highlight. This is really key to have that lovely bits of warmth running through the marble. And then the floating shelf, which was a big feat to get it to fit in there and to support the weight of it. It's super heavy. We wanted to do a feature lighting on the wall above the shelf. These ones are from Salt by the Casa, and I love the articulated feel and how it can be maneuvered if you want, but it just adds a level of detail and layering over at that side of the kitchen. One of the other requirements from my client was they wanted to be able to eat in the kitchen, but they also wanted to have this great island with tons of storage. So we tucked it all in on each side of the island at the end, because there's three of them, just for breakfast and lunches when they're together. Of course, the herringbone floor was really important and it has that houseman look that everyone wants to create right now. And of course, Athena had that in her kitchen too. All the main pieces of equipment, the dishwasher, the fridge, everything's hidden behind the cabinetry. And then we tucked in this great pantry off to the side for the hardworking bits. There's another sink in there. There's a stacked dishwasher in there and everything's tucked away neatly behind beautiful cabinetry. The only thing that isn't is the stove, of course, which is a highlight of the kitchen. And that's a happy accident. It was not supposed to be white, but we all fell in love with it and just let's just leave it. It, it works and sometimes that happens and those are big blessings. Hi, I'm Bona, a design editor at House & Home. We hope you're enjoying this house tour. We're just gonna take a quick minute to talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. For those of you not familiar with Squarespace, it's a one-stop shop platform to build and manage your very own website. Looking to move your portfolio online? Thinking of finally starting that blog? Maybe it's time to take your side hustle to the next level and finally launch that online shop. The selection of templates that Squarespace offers makes it super easy to jump in and get your site up and running in no time. It's really simple too. Just click and drag, no coding needed. There are also a ton of great marketing tools to help you get the word out. Head to squarespace.com today to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, be sure to go to squarespace.com forward slash house and home to receive 10% off the purchase of a website or domain. The arches were tricky because the husband, Dan, he's very tall and so we had to make sure he was going to be able to fit through these arches. So that was one of the challenges was making sure that we could get these beautiful intersecting arches that allow the space to feel open but still compartmentalized. So there's designated areas within the arches. I love how they turned out but we did have to sit here measuring like is Dan going to be able to get through this arch? The other thing is that there was this gorgeous crown molding that we wanted to maintain, but it's really chunky and thick, so it dictated how high the arches could go. So it was really tricky getting them to work together. Well, the living room is essentially the same size that it was before. It's more opened up now. It was key to keep the stone fireplace that was existing. I just like how pared back it is. It's not layered up too much. It's very open. There's lots of room for flow. They have cats and they can sort of all run around in there. And it's just very streamlined and elegant. In the front hall, we added all the applied molding and checkerboard flooring. That was a big inspiration as well that our client had. But we did it in a soft gray and a soft buff color, so it's not that classic black and white. I just find it a bit more livable. 
We also added a little mudroom at the back door with storage. It's compact, but it's totally efficient. It's in a nice soft blue color, so it adds that just one little moment of a slightly different color from the black and white. When we added the addition at the back of the house, we also planned out the ensuite, and it's really beautiful and dramatic up there now. And we designed it so that you walk through the walk-in closets, and then you get to the washroom where the Victoria and Albert bathtub is the center of the entire space. So it's a beautiful sight line right down the middle through from the bedroom. I think the whole house is soft and subtle. <laughs> so that's kind of my thing. We kept everything pared back. I don't like to layer up too much stuff in a room. I wanted each piece to be really beautiful quality, really elegant and soft. And I just think that makes each item feel that much more precious and special. And I think you really get that in the bedroom. By adding the ensuite washroom, their daughter got her own dedicated washroom, which also works for guests as well. And I just love that room. It's got little bits of pink in it. She really liked pink, so we incorporated a marble that has a pink undertone. We did a beautiful walk-in shower with a Corian arch, so we played on that same idea of the arches downstairs. I love that detail. I think it suits her. It's kind of girly and fun. We also refreshed the powder room in the basement. It was really dated and had a teeny tiny sink. So now she's got a substantial marble vanity with lots of room for towels and various accessories and painted it a nice moody color so it feels like a cozy moment instead of dingy like it was before. I think the house is so beautiful. I mean, I know my client loves it because she tells me every day. <laughs> she's probably giggling in the background. It was 100% important to have a reference to the history of the house. So we had to make sure that the house maintained some of that old world feeling, but modernize it with this updated kitchen. And if you look around, most of the new things that we added, like the checker floor, the herringbone floor, and the face frame in the kitchen, those are all traditional references as well. I just think we handled them in a really clean way, which makes it feel like an update.